We're going to solve an inequality now. This looks rather innocent. However, I want to warn you, if your equality is linear, it's relatively easy to do using algebra. Our inequality is not only quadratic, it's cubic. So we can't really just use algebra to solve this one that just disappeared. Uh, that being said, we're going to use a little, oh, come on. We're going to use a little bit of algebra. We're going to get all terms on one side. And that's uh, a good way to think about that. We're solving for zero. Now, I like my highest power term to be positive. So what I'm going to do is add v cubed to both sides. So we got positive v cubed plus 14v squared plus 45v. All right, and what are we going to do next? Uh, we're going to graph this. So we're going to graph the polynomial. Uh, we'll call it f of v, which is v cubed plus 14v squared plus 45v. So how do we graph? Uh, that was, this is not 3.7, this is 3 point something, 3.2, 3.3, something like that. Uh, we're going to graph this uh, as we did back in 3.1. So I'm not going to go through everything about how to graph this. Uh, well, in detail, we will graph it, uh, but I'm going to write the end behavior. Here's our cloud. We have positive v cubed. So odd means they don't match, positive I like to think about that as increasing down on the left, up on the right. And the way I remember odd is they don't match. Uh, if they're even, they match. Okay, so we need to know the x, or well, in this case, the v intercepts. So we're going to factor, and I can already see factoring a v out of here will be smart. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do next? Well, let's see if we can factor again. We're going to try to factor and get lucky. 45, it's got a few factors, but not too many. Let's make it a little factor tree here. 45 is 5 times 9. Of course, 9 is 3 times 3. There's a few ways to factor 45. 5 times 9. Uh, 15 times 3. And I think that's the only, and of course you got 45 times one, but I can cl uh, clearly see that's not gonna add up to give me 14. I think these are the only ways to factor it. Yes. All right, so we either have V with a five and a nine, or with a 15 and a three. Uh, Everything's going to need to be positive because I get positive and positive. Uh, it gets a little more tricky when you have a negative because uh, you have to figure out where the negative could go, um, unless you get a double negative. Uh, but for us, they're all both positive, so we're just going to. I'm just guessing here. We're about to check. You can't just guess in math. You have to guess and then check. That's a very important second step. All right, so let's check this one right here because I wrote it down first. So five times nine is forty-five. It better be because that's where we got them from over here. And now we're going to multiply the uh, first and the last. So I get, <clears throat> no, we're going to multiply outside, inside. So 5 times v is 5v. v times 9 is 9v. 5 plus 9 is 14v, which is that number. And so this is the correct one here. Uh, you could test this one right here. You know, 3 times 15 is 45. However, 15v plus 3v is 18v, which would not give us the right number of v's. So this one's not going to work. Okay, we're ready to graph it. So we have our factors. I'll list our factors here. We have just v. I'm going to write it as v minus 0. And we have v plus 5, v plus nine. They all have a first power, which means they're all crossing. There's no bouncing here. And we have our zeros. Remember your factors correspond to zeros. So it'll be the V value that makes it zero. So the first one is V equals zero. The second one 
is V equals negative five, and the third one, V equals negative nine. All right, so we're ready to graph. So most of my V values are negative, so I got zero, negative five, negative nine. I'm going to use the end behavior next. So we got down on the left, up on the right. So our uh, intercepts all cross, which means it goes cross, cross, cross like that. That's our graph. Now, if you thought maybe this one bounced instead of crossed, you would go bounce, cross. Oh, that's not good because it wouldn't uh, have the correct end behavior. So if you make one mistake, you should be able to tell. If you make two mistakes, it'll act like it's just fine. So as long as you make one mistake, you'll, you'll realize it. Okay, so we've finished our graph. Now what we need to do is answer the question that was originally asked. Nothing on this screen is the original question. Up here, I call this right here f of v. So we need to answer the question, uh, when is f of v zero or more? And we're gonna highlight that on the graph. So that means when is the y value positive? Well, it's gonna happen right here, all the way on the right part. And it's gonna happen right here, that little hill. Is it okay to equal zero? We see right here it's okay to equal zero. So I'm gonna fill in the zeros. If you had a strict inequality, if it just said greater than zero, then you would not include the zeros. And we're ready to answer this question. Come on, draw, there we go. All right, so the parts I've highlighted, negative nine comma negative five, I close these brackets because I need to include those two values. Union, it's also above the axis on the right here, which is zero comma. This goes all the way to the right, so that's infinity, also known as uh, two small o's when you're typing it in. And again, I include zero. You never include uh, infinity, so it's always gonna be a parenthesis at infinity. And that is going to be your answer right there. All right.